0829. Satan is hidden. Jeffersonville, Jena, USA. Let us bow. Dear God, we're grateful to you tonight for this grand opportunity to come again in the name of the Lord Jesus to meet our enemy, your enemy, out here on the field of battle and with the word to drive him away from the midst of your people that they might see tonight, Lord, the gospel light. I pray that you'll anoint our eyes with the eyes of that it might be open to the truth that we might live here saying within our hearts do not our hearts burn within us as he speak to us along the road heal the sick and the afflicted encourage and discourage lift up the feeble hands that once hung down may we look to the coming of lord jesus which we believe is at hand we ask it in Jesus' name amen be seated i would will try to be briefly tonight because i know many has come from the different sections of the country for the service or stayed over some of you and have to go back for maybe a ways to get back and i thank you this morning i wanted to hear brother never myself and i had him many times i never heard him any time but what i appreciated him but this morning that timely message i know i had the leading of the lord to listen to this morning to that this morning very fine and i see why you people like to come and listen to him also and he always do you good i'm sure to listen to him i was trying to catch up on some of my uh, interviews today this morning and this afternoon i still have many many to go and i as i believe it was jethro told moses one time said it's too much for you so you've got plenty of brothers here on your problems and every one of them has uh, been legitimate and they are uh, fine things that have to be taken care of and i would recommend our pastor or brother man and other ministers of our faith here you can go to them they would tell you this exactly thing to do some people the children intermarrying or things that's wrong and these men can help you just the same as anyone else because they're servants of Christ. And go to them, and I'm sure they will give you the help that you need. I can't get to all of them. There's just so many everywhere you go. They just keep accumulating higher and higher, you see. And you want to get to every one of them. But you can't do it. But I'm constantly praying that God in somehow will work it out all right for you. Now tonight, we want to go to the scripture and read a portion of the scripture out of Genesis, the third chapter, and just refer back a little bit to some things that we've been talking about in times past and see if the Lord Jesus will give us a little bit more to what we will know when we go out. I pray that he will. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which our Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did it. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. May the Lord add his blessings the reading of his word. Now I would like to take a text tonight out of that and call Satan's Eden. A very crude little thing to say of Satan's Eden. It kind of matches in the other Sunday night. I believe when I was speaking to you here most um, about a thinking man's filter and a holy man's taste. And sometimes these little good expressions bring us to something. It gets us to study and put you to reading the word. And that's what I want all my condition to do. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So read the word, study it, and study it with your the eyes of God to give you your intellectuals understanding and of how that we should live in this present day. Now, to come down tonight just to speak to you to say, well, I could do this or that. 
I like to speak with the people as much as I like to even go home with each one of you tonight. I, God knows that's truth. I'd like to go home with each one of you and to eat breakfast with you in the morning and go out and squirrel hunt with you tomorrow afternoon, see? I'd like to do that, but I can't do that. And I would like to go home and just sit down and talk with you, sit on the porch after the service and speak with you a while, talk to you about your welfare and about God. I would love to do that. Men and women in here, God knows I'd like to do that, but I can't do it. See, there's just um, such a pull and a strain. And in this nervous age that we're living in, and I'm a nervous type of person, today I got my mind made up to something. I've just got to do it. And tomorrow, it's a million miles from me. Something has done cut in and done this and that. And you have a time trying to keep your wits together. But my main achievement is to preach the gospel through the church and do all that I can to bring honor to Jesus Christ in this day while I'm here on earth. And what time I have left on earth, I come to to try to say something to you that would help you. Something I studied after I went home this morning. What could I say tonight, Lord, that these uh, would help those people? Listening to that mighty message this morning on Brother Neville brought us about, I thought it was so wonderful how he said there, um, a doctor will diagnose the case, but the man that comes with a pan full of needles and he gives the injection. So I thought that was really a really cute expression. I thought about that, the serum after the case is diagnosed. So that's a very good thing. I wanted to speak uh, to you something, to bring something to enlighten to you the promise of God for this age. See, something, not something that somebody else was in some other day, but something that when them things are all right, we all refer to those things. But I thought I would try to bring something to your mind with these scriptures i got written here that would enlighten you to know make you a better soldier in the field that you are fighting in now to learn the tactics of the enemy so that you can block everything before it gets to you see that's the big thing is to learn to keep the punches off of you as much as you can now let us look now to this great for a few minutes this great sinful day that we're now living in i don't believe they ever was a day that I've ever read in history. There's been many days, greater days of persecution, when the children of God was put to death on every hand. But to know, to see the deceitfulness of the enemy, we've never had a day like this we are now living in. It's a most cunning, deceitful day. And when I see that, it brings this that the Christian has to be more on his soul today than he ever was in any age. Now, back in the days of the persecution of Rome to the church, a Christian made a mistake. He went into the arena and was fed to the dogs or something like that when they found him or being a Christian for his testimony. But his soul was saved because he was a purely unadulterated believer in God and gladly sealed his testimony with his blood. As the veins let loose or holes into in his body and the blood bleed out, he would scream up with real faith and say, Receive my spirit, Lord Jesus. But now the cunningness of the devil now makes the people believe that they are Christian when they are not. There's a thing you don't have to seal. It's a cunning, more cunning day than it would be. Than when you had to seal your life away with your testimony. The devil has set every cunning trap that he can to be a deceiver. And God told us in Matthew 24 how this day would be that we're living in the most deceitful day that ever lived. So close that he would deceive the elected of God if it were possible for him to deceive. Now let us compare some scriptures or uh, prophecies spoken of in the Bible for today and compare it with the day that we are now living in. In 2 Timothy 3 we learn this that the prophet said that it would come to pass in these days that men would be heady, high-minded lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Compare that now, just a moment. We won't. We'll just brief it because we haven't that much time to go through it or like we should duly take it. 
but just to highlight it so that you can see when you get home and study it, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, and despisers of those that are good. Now, the Spirit spoke expressingly that these things would be in a latter days, that these days the prophecy speaking to it. Now, we read also in Revelation 14, or Revelation 3, 14 rather, the Laodicean church age, that how the church would be in this last days, and it would be, it says, it would sit as a widow and have need of nothing. It was rich and increasing goods, and know it not that they were poor, miserable, wretched, blind, and naked, and they didn't know it. There, now remember, he is speaking to the church of his age, wretched, blind, naked, and don't know it. That last phrase, that last word, is what makes it so striking. They think that they are all filled with the Spirit. They are all ready. The Laodicea Church Age is a Pentecostal Church Age because it's the last Church Age. Luther had his message, Wesley had his message, and Pentecost had their message. Also, it said that because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, the emotions of the outside, the mental conception of the gospel, because he said, you are that way, I'll spew you out of my mouth. In other words, it made him sick to see the church in that condition. And remember, they spewed him out. And he was on the outside of the church, trying to get back on the inside. In that awful Rodessia church, the God of this world today, the worship person of this world today, is Satan. And the people are ignorant of worshipping Satan. But it's Satan impersonating himself as a church, seeing as the church, they worship Satan, thinking that they are worshipping God through the church. But it's the way Satan has done it. Oh, you see? But wait a minute, we preach the word. Look back here at my text tonight. Satan was the one that preached the word to Eve first. God hath said, you see, it's that misconstruing that part of the scripture that applies to the day. He let you know all Jesus did was perfectly well. He let you know all that Moses did was perfectly well. But when you take the promises that they gave for this day, then that was applied to another age. That's just all he has to do, see, is to get the people to believe that that way and that all, for you cannot take one word away from it or add one word to it. But that's what he does. Poor people ignorantly worshipping Satan, thinking they're worshipping God. As we are warned by prophecy in Second Thessalonians, that's let's just read that Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Let's just get it um, a moment, if I can, right away. I'd like to read that. Just, I believe Second Thessalonians. I got the scripture here and say, "Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus and by the gathering together unto Him." Now see the coming of the Lord and the gathering to him as God will gather his people to him in the last days the gathering of the people to the Lord not to the church to the Lord gathering together to him that ye be not soon shaken in your mind or troubled neither by spirit nor word nor by letter as from us as the day of the Lord is at hand let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away fast and that man of sin Man of sin, what? What he is now? The man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That was Judas' sin, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. So he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That deceitfulness of the church of today, see? The son of perdition, the devil, the son of perdition, the devil, and then people worshipping Satan in this day, thinking, they are worshipping God, but they are worshipping him through a creed, a man-made denominations and creeds that brought the people right down to the greatest deception that the world has ever known of. No matter how much the word of God promised for this day is preached and vindicated, they still won't believe it. They won't believe it. Then why? We wonder why. Why doesn't it? Why won't they believe it? When God said he would do a certain thing and he does it and still they turn their back from it and turn away from it, just as Eve knew that what God said, God would do. But she turned her back on it to listen to what he had to say. 
Just remember in other ages, it's always been the same thing. In every age, it's always been that Satan tries to pervert that word to them, making them see some other age. Look, when Jesus came, see, Satan was in that bunch of Jewish teachers and rabbis and priests trying to tell them to keep their law of Moses when the very word said that in that day the Son of Man would be revealed, seeing that he would reveal himself so they was trying as long as he, as he kept them religious and on the law of Moses. So see what he did? He was trying to tell them. That part of the word was just exactly right. But this man isn't that person. See how deceiving he is. That's that real day of deception. It's been and now is Satan establishing his kingdom in the earth. That's exactly why he's doing it. For he wants to establish his own kingdom as a businessman. That's not a Christian. He'll work every scheme he can to make you see something the wrong way. If he's got a purpose and a personal gain in making you doing that, making you seeing it that way, he'll show you everything he can and keep you off from the truth of it because he's got a feeling only for himself. No matter how much he lies and cheats and whatever more, he's got personal gain. And that's why Satan has done this. And he has worked through the ministry to do it, as God promised he would do. Now, he began by a religious deceit in Eden and has continued ever since, not by setting up a bunch of communists. Communists has nothing to do with this. It's a, it's a church. That's where you have to watch, see? It's not the, it's not the communist that will deceive the related. It's the church that will deceive the related, see? It isn't communists. We know they deny God and the Antichrist. Sure, they are in principle, but they are not the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a religious, very religious, and can quote the scripture and make it look so plain. As Satan did back there in the beginning, he quoted everything right down. God has said, Thou shalt not eat every tree of the garden. See, quote it right out. She said, Yes, we may eat of all. All the trees of the garden but there's a tree in the midst of the garden that God said not to eat for not even touch it because that day we did that day we will die he said oh surely you will not die but let me give you the reason why God said this is because see he now what he quoted this truth you see he said it will open your eyes and it'll make you know good and wrong You'll be like God then, if you can do it. That's just what he wants to do. And that's just the same thing he's trying to do today. There's been a religious deceit since the very beginning at Eden, and has been ever since. In Adam's time, it was a deceit. In Noah's time, it was a deceit. In Jesus' time, same was the same. And now, in the same, the same way, a religious deceitfulness. Now, we will not notice the earth when God had it under control. Now, when God had it control, had it under his control, then when Satan took over by rejecting the word of God, God one time had the earth under his control. He set it in its orbit. He put it, make it work. He done everything, had it in his control. Now, we'll compare that with after Satan took it in his control. Now, it took God 6,000 years. It didn't take him that long, but he took that long, 6,000 years, because we're taught that one day in heaven is a 1,000 days on earth. And it was 6,000 years or six days that God built the earth. Now, it took God 6,000 years to establish it, plant it with good season to bring forth everything after its kind. Everything must come forth of its kind. All of his seeds were good. And so it must bring forth after its kind. God took 6,000 years. Finally, when he got it all made, and finally we finally arrived with its headquarters of the earth in a beautiful spot laying east of Eden called the Garden of Eden. God made the world headquarters in the Garden of Eden. In Egypt, right at the east end of the garden was the headquarters. And over the whole situation, he puts his own son and his son's wife over all of it. That's right. That's what God did. He put them in full control. They could speak to the winds and it would cease to blow. They would speak to the tree and would move it from here to there. 
the lion and the wolf fed together, and the lamb laid down with them. There was no evil. It was perfect peace, perfect harmony, everything in perfection. And when God had it under his control, and it, notice, he had his, he had his world. He had all in operation. He had everything coming, everything eating, meditations, nothing to die, nothing to be ruined, nothing to be spoiled, nothing. It was just perfect. And over it all, he placed his beloved children, his son and his daughter, a husband and wife, to control it. God was so satisfied, and he rested from all his works on the seventh day, and hallowed this seventh Sabbath day for him, because God looked it all over after he had been 6,000 years in molding it and fixing it out, making it come into existence and put the mountains up and make the volcanics push the mountains up and the things that take in place in the eruptions, drain it off and fix it the way he had it. And it was a beautiful place. There was nothing like it. The great paradises of God and the great dinosaurs and whatever more crawling through it and of the great animals, no harm in them. They were just as gentle as a little kitten. They had nothing at all, no sickness, no sorrow, not one disease germ on the earth. Oh, what a place. The great birds swinging from tree to tree, and Adam could call them by name, and they would fly up on his shoulders and coo to him. And oh, what a wonderful place God had. And then made one of his attributes from his own body. God has attributes in his body, like you are an attribute to your father. And you notice you was in your grandfather's grandfather's grandfather's. But in that day, saying, we'll take it down to like you and your father now. You did not know anything when you were in your father. The germ of life comes from the male. The male has a blood cell. The woman has the egg. Now, therefore, the blood cell has life, the life in it. And then when you were in your father, you actually know nothing about it. But yet science and God's word proves that you were in your father, but you know nothing about it. But then the father longed to know you. And with the union of connection with mother, then you were made known to father. Now you are your father's attribute. You look like him and you got parts of your body that uh, looks like your father. Now, that's the way God was in the beginning. Every son of God and every daughter of God was in God at the beginning. You don't remember it now, but you were there. He knew it and he wanted you to become so he could contact you, speak with you and love you and shake your hands. Don't you never want your own boy? It is, isn't it a great day when your boy can come home and sit down at the table when he comes back from the battlefield or something another scarred up, how you'll fix the, the dinner, you kill the fatted calf or whatever more and prepare for him. It's your own flesh and blood. And he was in you. You didn't know him then, but you knew he was there. And so God knew that we would be there. But then he puts us in flesh so we would be contacted in order. He could contact, he become one of us, when he becomes Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself, the fullness of the manifestation of God, therefore that was God's purpose to display his attributes in fellowship. When I was in my father, I knew nothing about it, but when I became his son and was born of him, I was an attribute, a part of my father, and you are a part of your father. And the children of God, we are a part of God's attribute that was in him made flesh like he was made flesh so we can have fellowship one with the other as a family of god upon the earth and that was god's purpose at the beginning yes sir. that's what god wanted at the beginning he had con everything under control and he turned down man over into the garden of eden on free moral agency say son it's yours what a beautiful place god was so satisfied till he just went back and rested from all of his works. Every tree never brought forth thorns and thistles. No berries ever come off with a thorn tree. Everything was perfect. All seeds were perfect. Everything was in perfect condition. Then when he went to take a little rest, his enemy slipped in with deceit and took it over by misinterpreting his program to his children. When 
he put trust in his own child as you put trust in your daughter when she goes out at night with a man, when you put trust in your son when he has to go with a drinking boy or a smoking boy, see, he put trust in his own son that he would not do anything wrong and would keep every word that he said. But the enemy slipped in like that grizzly slicker that uh, would take your daughter and misbehave himself or some woman would take go out with your son and the same thing. See, he slipped in. The enemy of God slipped in and misinterpreted the word to Eve. Now, he, by this fall, it has soon, it has uh, took over and possessed the Garden of Eden himself. He took it over. And now he has had 6,000 years of deceitful rule, deceiving the people, God's children, as he did then, because they were based on free moral agency to act any way they wish to, and believing that they would act right or trusting they would act right, then they have come with the wrong act and sold their birthrights as Esau did for the world. And Satan won it, and he took it over, and he's had 6,000 years to build up his Eden, as God had 6,000 years to build his Eden to a close. And by deceit, deceit of the word, or the people now established his own Eden in, the, in this earth in sin. God's Eden was established in righteousness. Satanism was established in sin because Satan is sin. God is righteousness. And God's kingdom is established in righteousness and peace and life. And Satan's establishment is in sin and religious sin. Notice how he deceived his uh, deception. As he said he would, he promised to do this. Did anybody know that? Let us turn to Isaiah. If you want some of the scriptures, if you, I ought to quote more of them, I guess, let's turn to Isaiah, the 14th chapter, just a moment, and just see what Satan said here, just a moment. In Isaiah 14, we'll read it and watch um, what this fellow done. In Isaiah 14, begin with the 12th verse, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars, that sons, stars of God, and I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, the side of the north. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most holy. Now compare that over here with our other scriptures over in the Thessalonians a while ago. How he said he sits in the temple of God, exalting himself above all that's called God, so that he, as God, is worshipped as God upon the earth. There is the God of this world that I preached to you about last Sunday. Here he is today in deceit, that treacherous hour, that treacherous time that we are living, in the most glorious time of all the ages, because we are facing the great millennium again. We are facing the Eden again, but right at this stage, all the deceit and every tactic that he's ever used and been able to deceive with, he's gathered it all together and reinforced himself and come down like God and put himself in place of God, religious, and can quote the scripture and can tell you scripture, just as Satan did to Eve in the Garden of Eden, but leave out one spot of it is all he has to do make that gap where the poison doctrine of the devil can power through like the thinking man's filter we was talking about the other night now he said he would exalt himself above the most high he would ascend above the clouds and the stars and he would sit there like god and be above the most high and he was succeeded in carrying out his threats he was certainly had a marvelous success in carrying out his threats by the people letting him explain away in every age the value of god's promised word to that age that's exactly how he done it in every age he explained it away in the days of noah he explained that it was impossible for it to rain from heaven for there is no rain up there his great scientific gospel that he preached in the garden of eden he could shoot the instruments to the moon and prove there is no moisture up there but god said there would be a rain but Satan succeeded and poisoned the mind of the people by scientific research that it could not be done. But it was done. God said it would be done. And it was done. He did. Now in the days of Jesus, he did the same thing. 
he poisoned their minds again by deceit, see, misinterpreting the word, if thou be the son of God, now let me see you do something about it. Jesus didn't clown for him. He never did. God is not a clown. You don't have to answer anything that Satan asks. He's only had Jesus said, it is written, Thou shalt not live, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Sin. He didn't have to clown from him. He didn't have to make bread. He didn't have done it, but he's been listening to the devil. So he didn't have to listen to the devil. And again, in it is religious sin as at the beginning, so deceitful. Watch it now. It's just... It's not just purely old everyday sin, committing adultery and getting drunk and using God's name in vain. That's not it, no. You remember years ago, many of you here, the old timers remember that someone I preached on the disappointments at judgment. The harlot, she ain't going to be disappointed there. She knows where she is going. The drunkard ain't going to be disappointed there. The bottle legger, the gambler, the liar, the thief, is, he is not going to be disappointed. But that man who thinks he's right, there's the disappointment. That's the fellow say, come, says, Lord, haven't I preached a gospel? Have not I cast out devils in thy name? Jesus said, depart from you, from me, you that work in equity, I never even knew you. And that's the disappointment, see, that deceitfulness. That's what I'm constantly, that's where I'm so misunderstood. It's not that I want to be different. I don't want to be different. But I've got to be honest. I have a message and that's people must go to the people. It makes it very much misunderstood amongst the people. They think I'm against everybody. They only know I'm for everybody and trying my best to bring them what's the truth. Just as it's laid on my heart and the way it's laid in the Bible here. And God proves that to be the truth. So there's nothing else can be done about it. So they look at it. Or they don't see they don't want to see it because they have already sold out sold their birth rates to some organization some denomination to try their birth rates to get to heaven upon the basis of some organized religion which satan is ahead of every bit of it god never did have an organized religion never did and they sell out to that where they a bunch of men interpreted the word and say it means this and it means that God needs no interpreter. He does his own interpreting. He doesn't need anyone else to tell him how to do it. He is sovereign. He said how he would do it, and that's the way he must keep his word. When he said, these signs shall follow them that believe, he meant just that. Whatever he said would take place. He said it would happen in these last days that he would uh, pertain to do certain things and he done it he has to ask nobody whether it's time or not he knows what time what the time is and what the plan is now satan this deceiver as spoke of in matthew 24 24 with so much deceit now we find that by these gospel programs of knowledge better education higher ethics civilization and so forth has bewitched the people that wants to serve God into believing his lie Eve did not want to do that, but he showed her how it was more wisdom in it. She didn't know. She wanted to know. She didn't understand, but she wanted to understand. And God told her not to try to understand. How can I understand any of these things? I cannot understand them. I believe them. I don't have to understand them. God is faith and not understanding. We just believe what he said. Now compare God's Eden to Satan's now. After six thousand years of perverting of the true interpretation of God's promised word to the age, let's compare it now and see where we get. Like he did to the church in Christ's time, in Jesus trying to keep back God's loyal sons from knowing the truth. That's God. God put his sons there, his attributes, to fellowship with him by hearing his word. What if your father told you, and you are a loyal son to your father, and he told you, son, don't go in that water out there swimming, because there's gators in that water. And a fellow comes back, said, surely, such pretty water as that, there's no gators in it. 
Now, who would you going to listen to? If you're a genuine son, you listen to your daddy. And a genuine son or daughter of God takes God's word first. I don't care what anyone, anybody else says about it. They take God's word first. There's poison in the cup and they believe it. Having faith in all his word, his seeds brought a hidden of holiness, love, and eternal life. That's what God's Eden produced, holiness. And he brought an Eden of holiness, of love, understanding, perfection, and eternal life. That's what God is planting, his word, his seed. That's what his church will be at the end. It will be the same thing. Notice, here's a thought, don't forget it. I won't get to it some other time or some other message, but you know, God said, let every seed bring forth of its kind. Is that God's commandment? Now that, what good is any preacher or anybody else try to make that word say something else? See, every word of God is a seed. Jesus said so. A seed, a sower sowed. So if Mark 16 is God's word, it will bring forth of its kind. If Malachi 4 is God's word, it will bring forth of, of its kind. And every other promise must bring forth of its kind. You see, see, Satan out here in disguisement, he's trying to say it's not, it's not so. Do you understand it? See, Satan say, oh, that ain't for this day. That's, uh, that was some other time. That don't mean, even mean that. Every seed must come forth of its kind. That's how God establishes Eden. Is that right? And here it is. That's how God establishes his church. Every word after its kind. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word proceeding out of the mouth of God. See, Satan, he'll take something else, but God said, every seed after its kind. If the promise said, these signs shall follow them that believe, now the church says, join the church, recite the creed. No, the catechism, there is not such things in the whole Bible. But Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If they take up serpents or drink deadly things, it won't harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Who is anyone to de deny that thing? Every seed will bring forth of its kind. If you are seed of God and attribute a son of God, then the word of God is sown in you, see? And then when you hear the word of God, my sheep hear my voice, a stranger, they won't follow. You get it? Then every seed comes forth after its own kind. Now we find out that every seed bringing forth of its kind, there is no death in the new, in that Eden. There is no death in the new Eden, see? There was no, nothing else but holiness, purity, and eternal life. Now, by unbelief in all of God's word has brought the seed of unholiness in Satan's Eden. We are now entering in where Satan is talking, taking the throne as Antichrist in an Eden of this earth, a uh, Eden of sin, perverted religion. He said, not upon I am Satan, I am a great angel. No, not upon that, but upon perverting God's word. And that's how he's brought his kingdom in every age. And now in this great deceitful age, ready to take his throne by his people, he has built himself an intellectual, educated, scientific hidden, right? Scientific preachers, scientific church, scientific theology, everything is scientific. Everything is on the basis of knowledge. The whole church is built upon knowledge. It ain't built upon faith. One time I went to hold a meeting to a man's church. It was a great auditorium in the West, a fine man, and he denied these things that we are talking about. But yet, he was, I liked him, a fine man, old man. When his congregation went out, it seated about 6,000 people. When his congregation went out, in the afternoon service, about 500, they were all fine-dressed intellectuals. I sat there and watched them. He preached a very good sermon, the man did, and then he asked if anybody wanted to accept Christ, just to raise up their hands, and no one raised up their hand. And finally, a woman raised up the, her hands. He said, all right, now you're, Christ, you're a Christian, and uh, made her for baptism. And then when he went out, he dedicated a baby, kissed the little baby, and made a prayer all over it, and dismissed the audience. When his congregation went out 
all fine scholarly educated people, then I was standing on the side to shake the man's hand and wish him Godspeed as he went out. And when I did, here come my crowd in. They couldn't let them in while his crowd was there. Here come mine in wheelchairs, stretchers, straight jackets, insane and everything else. See the difference? What it's that's it. That's the thing I'm talking about, see? It's something different. When by scientific knowledge you can make a understanding gospel that you, he that believeth on Jesus Christ, shall not be condemned, see? But these signs shall follow them that believe. See, he fails to put that in there, see? She believed in Jesus Christ, she saved, if these signs for the believer. And he that heareth my word, not just mix out, not hear it with his uh, ears, but understand it. Anybody can hear it, a prostitute can hear it, and remain a prostitute, see? A drunkard can hear it, a liar can hear it, and still remain a liar. But he that understandeth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, has a blasting life, see? There you are, see? And no man can do that except God for ordained him. Jesus said, No man can come to me except my Father draws him, and all the Father has given me will come to me. Amen? It's all the sovereignty and foreknowledge of God. He lives alone, and there's nobody tells him what to do. Now, by unbelief, in no talking, all the word of God has brought a seed of unbelief, unholy, sinful hatred, and eternal death is in the sinful intellectual church age. Now, you got it. In this day, that when the whole world is religious, did you know that the whole world is religious? And in this religious age, big churches on every corner. Everything, the whole thing, winds up in Satan being worshipped. Here it is, right here in the Bible, that's right. And in this intellectual, theological seminaries that's brought out an intellectual person that's been trained how to speak and what to do, how to make the emotions and everything like psychology, three and four years to know how to deal with a man's mind scene. It's um, the Spirit of God is not something that you that uh, is pulled into you. It's something that's predestinated into you by the hand of Almighty God. Your experiences cannot be schooled or taught into you. It's predestinated by God's hand and God's foreknowledge into you. That's right. Now, it brought forth this great Eden that they now live in a church. World's Eden, they are all uniting together now at the great ecumenical council and going to have the world church all coming under one head, where Satan will be thrown just exactly. And the last call is going out to catch the bride before she gets into that. For once in that, she is took the mark of the beast and doomed. She'll never come out of it. That's the reason. See, come out from among them, people, before it goes into him. See, come out from among them and be separated. Now, hatred and death and eternal separation from God in this Eden, last filth perversion, how? By sowing the wrong seed. Reminds me of the vision I seen before I ever met the Pentecostal people. Of that man going around the world in white. You have heard me tell it many times. And one coming behind him sowing seeds of discord. But he won it fairly in Eve. In the Garden of Eden, by the last of Eve for sin, the last for Eve of sin, then if Eve lasted for knowledge, it was sin. And when we last for knowledge, want a PhD, LLD, it's a sin to do so. That's strong statements, but that's the truth. No matter how strong it is, it's still the truth. See, to last for knowledge, understanding. The thing of it is, today, we try to establish the word of God in people's hearts. We are trying to establish ourselves. We don't try to establish the word of God in people's hearts. We are trying to establish ourselves. Churches are trying to establish the doctrine of the church in the person's heart. We are commanded to establish the word of God. Paul said, I don't come to you with enticing words of man that your faith might rest upon in the knowledge of man, but I come to you in power in manifestations of the Holy Ghost that your faith might rest in God. And there you are. Man must establish yourself we find it amongst, let God do something for a person and send him out. You find every man trying to impersonate each, see? They are trying to establish themselves. Every man, I did this, see? Me, I, my, my domination, me, this, establishing themselves. What are we preaching? 
about ourselves or the kingdom of God. Establish the word of God. Take out the unbelief and establish the kingdom of God in a man's heart. And the kingdom of God cannot be established in a man's heart unless God made that man thus. He cannot be established. And remember the deceitful part that men think that it's all right. See, there is a way that seemeth right to a to a man. The every intellectual being seems right. As I've told you a few Sundays ago, when I stood my uh, by my dying baby and Satan standing there and said, There's your daddy dead in your arms the other night. There's your wife laying down there in the mob, and here is your baby going. And you asked him to answer you, and he pulled your he pulled a shade down over you now. And yet he's a good God, and yet you said he was a healer, and you who are standing for what you said was right, you are wrong. Oh, every reason. Every mental faculty had to agree that it was right, and he was right that much. So was he right when he told Eve, your eyes will be opened and you'll know right from wrong, and you'll be as gods that way, knowing right from wrong, because God didn't let them see themselves yet, that they were naked. So they had known they would know right from wrong, and he was right. But you see, it was contrary to the word of God. And so does ministers in seminaries learning man-made theology. It may seem right, it may seem a good understanding of the thing, but it's wrong. We don't have to understand it. We believe it because God said it so. And that settles it forever. The whole thing, that's a way to believe it. Oh, how Eve lasted to have a PhD, you see? How she lasted to be as smarter than she was. Notice how much alike man and his wife Notice now, man and his wife are both naked in the garden of Eden, God's Eden. Now I'm going to close. I said I'm going to close. Hold just a few minutes. Look, watch now as closing. Compare this now. How much I like that man and his wife, both in God's Eden, without one stitch of clothes on them, and knew it not. For why didn't they know it? For they were veiled to their senses of nakedness by the Holy Veil of the Holy Spirit. They could look right at each other and they didn't know that they were naked. They were veiled with the Holy Spirit of holiness. They were veiled. God's veil yet today can look and not last. And they, they turn their head. It's a Holy Veil, see? Holy Veil. God had their eyes. They were both. One was man and the other was woman. And they did not know they were naked. Because the holiness of God kept their eyes veiled. Notice God hid their conscience from sin by the holy veil. Wish we had some time to lay on that a few minutes. Look here. For he, the worshipper once purged, Hebrews, the worshipper once purged, has no more conscience of sin. Sin has passed from him. I heard Brother Neville say this morning, Someone might uh, have been asking him, why didn't I preach on the Holy Ghost? Why didn't I do this? Here it is. The Holy Ghost is the action in you. It's a life, not an emotion, not some sort of a flesh evidence. It is a person of Jesus Christ, the word of God established in your heart to quicken every word of this age, right? Watch the Holy Ghost in action, not so much in demonstrations, but in action. What it does according to the word. Notice now the Holy Spirit of God's Holy Word had a man and a woman naked and didn't know it. How beautiful. Life of the word, the seed, the word. God said there's a tree in the midst of the garden, the woman. And in the midst of the garden is this tree. Don't even touch it. For the day you eat thereof, that day you die. They were wholly veiled from it. Didn't know nothing about it. Dearest to touch it. They were wholly veiled. They were safe in God's pavilion. They were alive. They had no death around them. Hallelujah. They had perfect love one for the other. 
perfect life forever. They had perfect love, perfect understanding of the love of God. They had God's word and kept it. And they were alive and safe in God's Eden with no death at all around. Then Satan got Eve to listen to his gospel of theology, the gospel of knowledge, higher schooling, higher ethics, better civilization, higher education, and so forth. And then when he got the her to stop and listen to him a minute, to his reasonings, which we are commanded to cast down when he got her to listen to it. Now look here, the church is so and so. It's been established for so long. We are one of the oldest churches in the country. The mayor of the city goes. I don't care what it is. See, if it's against God's word, be against it. That's your enemy. Anything that's against the word is your enemy. Everything that's for the word is your brother. He's a part of you. Notice she pulled off the holy veil to see what sex really was. Compare that. What lust really would do. She pulled the veil from off her eyes, the holy thing that God had put over her eyes. She wanted knowledge to know what it was all about. So she pulled the veil off to see what it was all about. She listened to the devil and notice what a place it put her in. They have done the same in each age thereafter, always taking the intellectual side and has now built a kingdom of Satan and knowledge he seed that he sowed and has took the world to be an Eden of death. Now notice, now look, in at Revelation 3, the Lord is here and touch it. You think, eat in your mind. Now notice, she, Eve, is a Satan's queen. See, Satan's the serpent got to Eve before Adam got to her. See, that's right. So he beguiled her. See, so Satan, the serpent, was the husband of Eve before Adam ever knew. See, he beguiled her. The Bible said he did, and she knew she was naked. And see, now look at the Laodicean church. She, Eve, is sitting as Satan's queen. She's rich in worldly goods, blind, naked again, and don't know it, just like it was in God's Eden. But now, not because the holy veil is over her face, but the last veil, that she took off God's holy veil and put on a veil of knowledge for last. And now she has... Uh, last veil that she is blind to it being seen. She is naked on the street and don't know it. She is a prostitute on the street. Women with these shorts on in God's sight is a prostitute and don't know it. Notice, take our women now. If you want to see what condition the church is in, watch the way women are acting. She always represents the church. In Satan's Eden of sin and unbelief, a religious perversion, perverted kingdom, instead of taking God's word, they have took the intellectual learning of man. Instead of taking the church, they took the organization and they're bringing it to one great head. Now notice, perverted from innocence. Don't miss this now. The church has been with this last bill on. Notice it. what it's done to her. It's perverted her from Innocence to knowledge. See, the holy veil. She was innocent. With the last veil, she is knowledge. She knows it's pleasant. She knows what it does. See, it's a fruit, a tree to be desired, making one wise. See, she is perverted from innocent to knowledge, from holiness to filth and lust, and from life to death. This kingdom has to die. This kingdom shall die. The kingdom of God will destroy it from the face of the earth. Notice in this perversion, it's become from a man to a woman and from a woman to a man and don't know it. A very good product of Satan's Eden. Now, if you watch the streets today at our modern people, notice it was Eve that Satan used to make Adam sin by her power of lust. Now, the same, doing the same thing today. Notice <clears throat> bobbed hair, uh, painted faces, sexually dressed, see, she... Uh, See, she does that and don't know that every one of those things is contrary to the word of God. To cut her hair makes her a dishonorable woman, a prostitute to wear shorts, puts her disgracefully, put sexy dresses on her, makes her a prostitute. And she don't know it, not because of the holiness of God, because the lust of Satan. She caused her, she causes her Adam to lust for her. She took off the clothes that God dressed her in 
back in Eden for her journey through the, this wilderness. She took them off. She stripped herself down. When God had her wrapped all over in skins, she began to shave a little off each time. Now she is back to where she was at the beginning. Now she has got her Adam to wearing her underneath clothes. A man put on them little old sissy looking shorts and get out here. I don't think there's much man to him. He's the biggest sissy I know of seeing. She has got her averted her Adam to act like she. See, wearing her underneath clothes. She's seen what she could do out yonder when she got took off all her of her clothes but her underneath ones that's a shorts because um, that's a women's underneath clothes and here her Adam is wearing them now which according to God's original word is an abomination for a woman to put on a garment that pertains to a man and a man to put on a garment that pertains to a woman from the original word think of it now he now wears her bangs also he comes them down puts a color in them some of the most sickly sights i've ever seen in my life is some of those kids out here today with their bangs combed down like this and colored bleached hair with some kind of peroxide something and bleach their hair and rolling it in colors making bangs you sis big sissy that's a horrible thing to say from a pulpit but judgment begins at the house of god you don't even know whether you are a man or a woman and i understand that our united states army is coming out next in shorts that's right seeing what the perversion is it's a woman's clothes wear her bangs and the other day i was over howard johnson's not this one here but on the road going out and i just sat back in amazement here come a little boy along his mouth open and he had dark hair here and it's combed it over this way and put a roller in it and curled it up around top of his eyes looking out the top of his eyes around if i ever seen a perversion see he wouldn't believe it he could prove maybe he was male but in his spirit he is a female he he don't know what side of the house he belongs on that's right he's how perverted that's what satan does he perverts the nation he perverts the church he perverts the people he's a deceiver a perceiver of the original truth perverter of the original truth god made a man a man he made a woman a woman and he dressed them different and he meant for them to stay that way and to act that way one is feminist and the other is masculine he separated adam in the garden of eden and did this separated eve from him now wears her bangs she cuts her hair like this and he tries to wear his like hers see she wears his outside clothes and he wears her inside clothes now that sounds religious but i don't mean it that way it's the absolute gospel truth if you don't know it then something's wrong with you you're either blind or never been on the street and she thinks and he thinks that it's right they're getting along somewhere A woman says well it's so hot and the old Apache Indians out yonder would make you ashamed of yourself. More heat they get, the more clothes they put on to keep the sun off of them. Oh, make it sweat so you can have an air conditioner as they walk, see? They stand right out in the sun. You couldn't stand nothing. You would blister and burn. But you see, it's what you call high education. Modern science has produced this. Oh my there she is naked in Laodicea and don't know it she was naked in eden see the two kingdoms are like one is of sin and death and the other one is life and righteousness in there she is veiled with a holy veil they were both naked they didn't know it they didn't know nothing about it because they were veiled with god's spirit and here they are veiled with lust and they look at one another to see adam could look at eve and didn't know she was naked but now with this last veil she doesn't realize she's naked but she does it under this last veil to make man look at her it's the only thing she can do it for he believe that but you do it anyhow the man look and he found out you got so much attraction till he come around and put some of your clothes on himself 
Oh, what a perversion. What a age. What a time we are. How deceitful it is. Oh, all these things and don't know it. A perfect perf perverted spirit in the man. He is veiled from the lust of Satan and the woman is too. It's a satanic spirit of a great society, you see. They don't know. But they are an organization. Women with shorts on belongs to an organization. A man dressed like that. That is an organization. I'll give you the abbreviation of it. BSS, Big Sister Society. So that's what they belong to. Come out there, a big CC society with them little old pants on, big old knots looking, dirty looking thing. I am uh, man. Now, you may differ with me on this, but that's the truth. You have been perverted and don't know it. You are not. Don't act like a man no more. See, coming so soft and their son will be nothing to them anymore. Men and women too. They have a society. There is an organization. Why? John next door wore shorts. So why can't I? Lucella wanted me to wear them because God wear them next door. And well, if Susie Jane can wear them, so can Martha Jane wear them. Or Susie Lou. Or ever who her name is. See? see, it's a society. It's an organization. You spiritually belong to it and don't know it. And if that's so, and we are we see it so are you so are you blinded you are blinded to these denominations that Satan has fitted you into and it's the perversion of the God's original word and his kingdom and his plans for his children Satan has twisted the men and women into these things and they don't know it are perverted no longer a son of God bangs hanging down in the his face in a pair of shorts on, tracking down the street, a son of God, a deacon in a church, a pastor in a pulpit. No, that ain't a son of God. He never came through God's thinking filter. He wouldn't have them women clothes on. He sure wouldn't. Neither would she have the man's clothes on. See, it's not a son of God. It's a son of Satan and a daughter of Satan. Hard thing to say. Satan succeeded in perverting and taking over this world and making it his kingdom that man was put on by free moral agency to choose for themselves what kind of life they desired. And that shows what it's in your heart, seeing your voice. You know what your actions speak so loud, it drowns your voice. Uh -huh. Let me go to a man and say, oh, we are all Christians, we belong to church. And strip teasers hanging all over his face, huh? It wouldn't make no difference what he told me. I would know better. So would you. Let a woman say uh, she's a Christian with short hair. Uh-huh. You know better than that, see? Yes, sir. Let her say she's a Christian wearing paint and makeup and shorts and say she's a Christian. You, bet, you know better than that. The word of God teaches you better than that. The word says she can't do it and be a Christian. She is even dishonorable and everything. How is God going to put a dishonorable thing in his kingdom? No, sir, not at all. No, sir, their selves, they show their desires. You can't get a dove to eat a buzzard, with a buzzard. Not at all. A dove don't have any girl. He can't eat that old um, carrion. If he took a bite of it, it would kill him, and he knows it. But a buzzard can eat most anything he wants to, see? He's got plenty of girl. So then you find out that's the way it is with the world today. Same thing. They are naked, blind, and don't know it. Satan did it by the woman's lust for knowledge, for sex, which she chose by her own choosing. Now notice it was Eve that led Adam to the wrong. And it was the woman that took off her clothes before her Adam took off his, see, it's the woman always, it's always been, it still is the same way. It's a church that leads the monastery. It's a church, see, that leads the man that wanted to be a son of God. It's the woman, the church, not the Bible, God for the Bible is man. Oh yeah, the word was made flesh and he was a man, see. The Bible is man. The church is woman, see? It isn't the church. The Bible that leads the man astray is the church that leads him astray. It's the church he went naked with, not the Bible, see? No, indeed. 
the Bible tells him he's naked. Yes, sir. Now, notice now how by sex, deserve sex. She lasted for knowledge to know what this is and how, whether this fruit was a good or not. And she did it. God will take it back someday, though, by a man. It was surrendered by a woman, but it was redeemed by a man, the man Jesus Christ, which is the word. And then, what is it? Notice in closing, here not long ago, I made this statement. I got about four or five pages in there, but I got scriptures and things I want to refer to. But listen, let's close in saying this. Remember, here not long ago, I was teaching you on the seven trumpets, the feast of the trumpets, and so forth. And I said, there is a eight-day revival. So the seventh day will be the last. That would be the millennium. But there's an eighth day festival, which if it was the eighth and there's only seven days, would make it the first day again. Come right back to the first day. Then after the millennium is over, then there will be an established Eden again. God's great kingdom will be taken back because Jesus fought it out with Satan in the garden of Gethsemane and won back the Eden, which he has gone to prepare in heaven to return again up in heaven, he said, let your hearts be troubled. When he was here on earth, he said, you, Jews, have you believed in God? Now I know I got a bad name, he said, but they say I'm this, the other. But you believe in God, and as you believed in God, believe also in me. He was God manifested, saying, believe also in, for in my father's house are many or in my father's economy is many plans in many uh, is many palaces i'll go and prepare please look how long it is 1500 square miles see where is it at he's going to prepare it he's a creator he creates all that gold the streets are transparent he's a creator making he's making a place over in revelation 21 he said and i john saw the holy city coming the new Jerusalem descending from God out of heaven. There was no more sea. The first heaven and the first earth was passed away. What was our first heavens? Was a millennium. What was the first earth? Was this? It will be renovated, just like it was baptized by Noah in the days of his preaching. Was sprinkled by Christ as he sprinkled his blood upon it and be renovated. Take all the germs and everything off of it. In the renovation at the end with a fire baptism that will kill every germ, every sickness, every disease, every filth that ever was on earth, shall burst forth and come forth a new earth. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. First heaven, this first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending from God out of heaven. There God will be with his true attributes, sons and daughters where he can fellowship with them in holiness, with his eyes blinded to any sin. There'll never be no more sin from there on. Let us strive hard. Don't be deceived in this day, but strive to enter in at the gate. For all that will be left out will be homongers, lusters. Whoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already. All with outside will be ill-famed women, ill-famed men, and so forth. And only those that are redeemed and in the Lamb's Book of Life will enter in at the gate. So strive, friends. Don't be deceived in this last day. This is a great time. Everybody has got money. Everybody can do this. And everybody can do that. And money flowing everywhere. And big cars and everything. There won't be one of them in that city. There won't be no uh, one car, one airplane. No, it will be altogether a different civilization. It will be again a civilization, not of knowledge, not of science, but of innocence and faith in the living God. Let us strive to enter into that, for that's my whole purpose, is to enter into it, that city someday, and just look back, coming along with me, see every one of you marching, when we sing the saints go marching in, I want to be in that number, when the saints go marching in, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as the days are closing, and we see it drawing nigh, the promise is drawing nigh. We pray, dear God, that you'll place that upon our hearts so we won't make any mistake. Dear God, keep our conscience pure. Keep our hearts veiled. Lord, our eyes veiled from the things of the world. 
and vain things of the world, vain glory to become some big somebody. No matter how big they are, all kings, monarchs, potentates, and everything else has to perish. And they will not rise in the first resurrection. For it's written, Blessed and holy is he that has a part in the first resurrection on which the second death has no power. Oh God, the second death is a spiritual death, has no power. He is redeemed. Oh God, just think that one of these hours, one will be going to visit another and be caught up. Two in a bed, I'll take one, leave one. Two in a field, I'll take one, leave one. Oh God, help us to be pure in the sight of you, Lord, no matter what man thinks about us, what other people say, Lord, let our holy, our conversations be holy, let it be seasoned with God's word, so seasonable that there is no guile found in us, while we plead in our own mistakes that the blood of Jesus Christ will stand between us and God, that he'll look down upon us through the blood of Jesus, not upon our own righteousness or who we are, but what we've done, but upon his merits alone, God grant it. May not one who sit here tonight and heard the message, may not one of them be lost from the least child to the oldest person, may their holy desire be only for God and his word. We know not what hour he may appear or what hour he may summon us to answer up yonder at the judgment. We don't know what hour he may. As it was, take our card from the rack, say it's homecoming time, we have got to go. God help us to keep pure, grant it, Lord. May we live till the coming of the Lord, if it be possible. May we do everything that's in our power with love and understanding, understanding that God is searching the world today, finding every lost sheep, and may we talk to them with seasoned prayer of love and the word of God, and we, that we might find that last one so we can go home and get out of this old Eden of Satan here, Lord, that's all built upon lust and beautiful women and so, as uh, so-called in the world with their advertisements on there. We advertise and want boys to come with jam on their faces and pretty girls with shorts on, right on through our radios and televisions and all kind of filth and gum in Hollywood, all kinds of sexy, dirty, filthy dresses for women and men perverted and taking women's apparel and cutting their hair like women and women like men. Oh God, what a horrible hour we're living in. Oh, come Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord, cleanse us by the blood. Take all filth and guile away from us. Let us live, Lord. Let us live under the blood constantly before you. It's our heart's desire and our sincere plea. Dear God, laying on that plot or those desks tonight where the gospel has been laid, Lord, here lies handkerchiefs and little parcels that go onto the sick and afflicted. Let the prayer of faith, Lord, fall from our hearts now in your sight. Then, Lord, if there be any unclean thing in us, Lord, take our take us to the judgment now, for we plead for mercy, reveal to us what we are doing wrong. Lord, let so we can ask to take the blood and cleanse us, heal the sick people and make them well. Father, whatever it go unto, wherever they go, let it be so, Father. Give us the determination to serve you and know you only. Only grant it, Lord. Grant safety to these dear people that's on the road home. Thank you for how you've healed the people. The, and Sister Shepherd and Brother Shepherd, little boy, heart on a bicycle. I pray that no evil will come to that. The little fellow riding his bicycle, I pray that he'll be all right. We thank you for your healing of these others that we have asked for and we know that what we ask we receive because we have confidence in the one that made the promise give us the promise of thy grace lord and forgive us of our sins we ask in jesus name jesus christ's name amen do you love him do you believe him are you sick and tired of satan's kingdom do you believe it's coming to a millennium unto his millennium his his eden you believe it's been formed today look everything is based upon intellectuals all everything has to be scientifically proved before they'll believe it and you cannot scientifically prove god you have to accept him by faith for he that cometh to god must first believe that he is and a rewarder of those that diligently seek him oh god 
I don't want to know nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses me from sin. I know nothing but Jesus Christ. And as Paul said of old, so say I tonight, I know nothing among you, only save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all I know to tell you. That's his Bible. I believe with all my heart. If I know my heart to be the perfect unadulterated word of God, by this I live, by this I stand. And if I had 10,000 lives, I'd like to give every bit of it for this word, for it's the word of Jesus Christ. And I don't care how much I can try to disprove it, how much science tries to say it isn't trustworthy and so forth. To me, it's the only thing that I, in the world, I can trust is this word. He is mine. I love him. Do you? Is there a sin in your heart? If there's a fault in your heart, if you've got anything, pray now and ask God to forgive you. You pray for me, I'll pray for you. God bless you. Is my prayer till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet. God be with you till we meet again. Do you love one another? John said to children, love one another. Love one another for love covers a multitude of sins. Now let us shake one another's hand. God with you to limit again till we meet till we meet now be kind to one another be kind to everybody treat your neighbor right keep yourself unspotted till jesus comes fit till we meet till we meet god be with you till we meet again you love him that's my prayer he pray for me i'll pray for you i got to go back to do so now and i pray that god will bless you all i'm going from there to canada and back to colorado around 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 see until brother tony is over there and a great thing has happened right under the vatican in rome they're calling for revival a meeting for me to come then hold a revival in rome he just returned back the people is all together they got a great arena there sits thousands and thousands and they want me to come for revival they want to see the glory of the lord in my ministry i don't know i pray I have to pray over it, see what the Lord will tell me. Oh my, remember we pray, all of us together. We are what? We are watching for the coming of our blessed Savior. Lo, and behold the fig leaves, now becoming green. The gospel of his kingdom has gone to every nation. And when near the end can be seen, is that right? Then gladly away. Will herald the message of his blessed appearing soon his coming glory to tell to one and all then wake he saints of the lord my slumber when the end is nearing let's get ready for the final call she'll turn at the west and right but again one of these days just remember yes she sure will and that's right until then take the name of jesus with you child of sorrow and of woe it will joy and comfort give you take it everywhere you go precious name precious name oh how sweet oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven precious name oh how sweet oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven at the name of jesus bowing falling prostrate at his feet king of kings in heaven will crown him when our journey is complete Precious name, precious name, oh how sweet, oh how sweet, hope about the joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope about the joy of heaven. Now, on this last verse, let's sing it with our bowed heads, hearts now. Take the name of Jesus with you, as a shield from every snare, when temptations round you gather. These things of the Satan's kingdom you sing, just breathe that holy name in prayer, that's all, then walk way it works it i've tried it just believe it now because it will work just breathe his holy name in prayer the name of jesus with you as a shield from every snare when temptations run you gather what do you do just breathe that holy name in prayer that veil will come over your face then precious name precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven let us bow our heads now I will ask Brother Billa back there to come here to the platform. Brother Brenham Hams, take the name of Jesus with you. Just breathe his holy name in prayer. You dismiss us, Brother Billa, you dismiss us in prayer. Precious name, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh, precious name, oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Now the heads bowed and our hearts bowed. Brother Billa, one of our associates here. Brother Astral Billa, fine Christian brother, loyal 
man. I'm going to ask him if he'll dismiss the audience. Nice prayer. God bless you, Brother Bill.